previously on. Buying Alabama. Is the floor secure enough for our buyer to go in here? I think we probably would just have to stay on this main level. Do not enter into any rooms because we may be having to pick you out of a hole. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. What is that? I'm waiting on you. Cause look, now you know we got to go in here and see this property before the buyer gets here. We can't just show up and then walking through scared with him. I you know, know, but Russell, I'm just saying like, <laughs> how, how, have you walked through it? It'll be all right with me if you already walked through it. Right, it's, you just got to be careful because hey, it's, it's some holes here, holes there, you know, it's not very safe. But hey, I'm with you, I got you. I'm straight with this, I'm straight. <laughs> I ain't got to go in there. <laughs> well, let's just say it's, it's not the most well-maintained property. Yeah. Is the floor secure enough for our buyer to go in here? I think we probably would just have to stay on this main level. Do not enter into any rooms because we may be having to pick you out of a hole. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God, what is that? Oh my God, did that fall through the roof? Oh my God. The floor has sunk in. Yes. Literally. This room is safe. We can't let him go in this room. This room is not safe at all. We can't we can't allow him to go in there. That's that's this is hazardous for sure. Yeah. This is a learning curve for both of us. Because when you're dealing with distressed properties like this, we definitely gotta walk through the properties and make sure that they're safe for our buyers. Absolutely. Walking into a dilapidated home could be very dangerous. There are many risks at hand. Unstable flooring, the roof could give. Stray animals, sometimes even squatters. You have to be safe at all times. Because this one has a lot of structural issues to it, we gotta be definitely careful going in. We've already walked in the property and reviewed it, so make sure that you're, you know, that you're close by and while you're previewing the property. Because we definitely don't want you to fall in. And one of the rooms is actually the ceiling had fell in and then the floor has fell in too as well, so. You may remember this investor in an earlier episode, explaining how he feels when walking into a distressed property. When I walk into these properties, uh, I take it as a challenge. I take it as a challenge. Okay, well, what can I do? And then I start picturing, okay, I can do this. How can I make this place more beautiful so that way whoever comes in can really enjoy it for a long time? This proves the old statement to be true. Another man's junk is another man's treasure. Just listening to the ideas flowing from the investor from the walkthrough was amazing. I'm gonna open this up. Okay. That's going to be a kitchen right there. Okay. When you walk in, yeah. this is going to be a living room right over here. Okay. That's going to be one bedroom. We're going to have an opening right there. Mm -hmm. Dealing with these homes, you have to have a vision. Seeing it for what it could be. 
the investor seems to like the property and already has a plan on how to move forward. Time to get with the sellers and get the ball rolling. After coming to an agreement with both the buyer and seller, we made it to closing day. Time to get the paperwork signed. The closing attorney is Charles McDougall. He carefully goes over every document to make sure everyone has a full understanding. After dotting every I and crossing every T, the deal is sealed and we can now turn the investor loose on his new property to see what beauty he is going to make of it. Meet Mark Newman and his wife Nikki. They're house hunting and called on Community First to help assist. They're interested in something fresh and new. So Anita took them to check out several new builds. In buying a home, Anita always sticks to her guns by telling the clients to take their time. This will be the largest note in your life. After a few showings, the Newmans are still looking. But this is part of the process. Sometimes waiting is good. It gives you an opportunity to keep looking because that very house you looked at last week may not be as beautiful as the house that will come available on next month. Meet Marion Walker. He and his wife are previous home buyers of Community First. Anita loves repeat clients. In her book, if they come back to purchase again, she has done her job. Repeat customers always are an honor to work with. He and Anita took a look at a 3.1 acre lot. The beauty of a new build is that you can not only work with the realtor, but you can also work hand in hand with the builder. From picking what type of roof, down to picking the door knobs. Yes, it's that detail. Let's go back to last episode, where we had an investor ready to put an offer in on the old Mexico building. We're overly excited about the great food and culture he's about to bring to Dolphin. El Sabor is a Spanish word and it means the flavor. So at El Sabor we serve authentic Mexican food, authentic Indian food. We want people to experience Latin America. Over here, we brought the painters who painted all these nice paintings from Mexico. The culture is all about dancing, eating, having fun. So for that, we got a group of Colombians who can teach our guests how to dance. Latin experience is incomplete without a margarita. So we brought a female bartender from Colombia to make the best margaritas in town. I recommend my guests to try a margarita called Valiente, which is made up of beer. And another margarita called Amarocito, made up of chocolate. I'm bringing authentic Mexican food to India, and all this is my grandmother recipe. I would like to all my guests try the California burrito with the homemade salsas, especially with the cheese dip. Another dish I would like my guests try is the biryani. Well, good news. The offer was accepted, and today is closing day. While getting the paperwork signed, Rasul couldn't help but to smile. Not only for the sale, but knowing it will be another great gem for Dolphin. Another profound business. Providing jobs, excellent food, and a peek into another culture right here in our amazing city.
finally, closing complete. The investor is now set to begin on his new venture. And to just think, it all started as a simple vision. Here we meet the pews. They found their dream home in two days of house hunting. Anita admired them because they didn't give up until it was theirs. Their process was extremely fast. Before we knew it, we were at the closing table, where Cliff Mendum was the closing attorney. They were also accompanied by the seller, which was represented by Miss Crystal Dukes of Keller Williams Realty. How did your experience go? It was I mean, it was like signing your life away. <laughs> And it was fast. Yeah. 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 That's what I be telling people. When you got all your stuff right, it goes just like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we find a house in like two days. Mm -hmm. yeah, two That's days. why it's been taking everybody else like a long time. And it's because you can't to stay consistent in what you want. You're looking at too many houses, it's going to confuse you and right. you get off your focus. The oh, one thing that I like to work in with you guys yeah. is that you was like, you you knew, went out there. You already knew the market. Mm -hmm. You knew what you what area you wanted to invest in, and you yeah. did whatever you wanted to get to do to get the loan, so and then and to get the house. But you did that. I love that. I lived there 23 years and raised a beautiful son, and I just um, it was um, it was just half my life, you know. That a lot of good memories. A lot of good memories. Your mom is still here. My mom is still here in Dothan, yes, and I've decided to move to the beach and I come back to Dothan though and take care of my mother and you know help her every other week, every couple of weeks, and um, it was just time to say goodbye to Selkirk. So, <laughs> hello, beach. <laughs> we even have the pleasure of meeting new realtors in the field. So today we have with us Susan Crawley. She is new to KW. We're so excited to have Susan. Um, she is um, out here in the trenches and you know, kind of you know, getting her foot wet into the real estate market. We're so excited to have her on board um, and looking forward to all the things that she's going to be able to accomplish here, um, as well as you know, making sure everyone knows that if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, Susan is more than happy to uh, to help you out. with tons of things happening in the real estate world. Anita has still been molding and shaping her most prized possession, the community first real estate building. She has been operating out of the lower level while patiently getting the upper level finished so she could migrate her business upstairs. Anita told us this has been a four year process. There were many bumps in the road, but she has worked diligently to get things done. This building was once the first bank of Dothan. So Anita was honored to call this place home for Community First Real Estate. Now let's rewind back to the very first episode, where we met Mrs. Janice Jackson. She was a client of Curtis. She was very concerned if he could sell the house for her. And within one day of listing her home, she had three offers. One offer being way more than what she expected. Fast forward. Today is now closing day. Where Joel Weatherford was the closing attorney. And now with the paperwork signed, Mrs. Janice can now pass over the keys to the new homeowner. I'm very nervous. Uh, I was nominated for Small Business Person of the Year, and I'm about to go in for initial interview. So, um, praying and trusting God. As you may have heard, Anita was nominated for Small Business Person of the Year. She was shocked and elated all at the same time. Being community driven is second nature to Anita. So when someone acknowledges it, she's often caught by surprise because she feels like it's a part of her. 
almost like someone rewarding her for breathing. She looks at it like it's something she is supposed to do, although she didn't win. She was grateful to even be nominated. This further proves that hard work and dedication doesn't go unnoticed. To her, it's another win for her company. Community first. Shorita Kelly was one of those clients that knew what she wanted and how she wanted it. She knew her colors, her cabinet style, and even flooring. Catching the builders in the middle of construction always gives you the option to add your own touch. And that's exactly what she did. The house turned out gorgeous. Now, here it is closing day. And Shorita is overly excited to sign the papers on her brand new home. The closing attorney was Joel Weatherford. And as always, he made sure to thoroughly explain each paper she was signing. Each closing is different, but all the same. It's a joyful occasion, knowing when you leave the office, that you are now the owner of a new home or property. Whether it's a home to raise your family, or land to build your business, it's always a great feeling. After getting all the paperwork signed, Shorita is handed the keys to her brand new home. Congratulations, Miss Kelly, from Community First. When meeting Miss Tamika and Patsy McGlon, they were looking to grow their home and actually have more square footage. And normally whenever you're dealing with a buyer, you want to start out trying to uncover some of the needs and some of the wants of that buyer. So what we do here at Community First and what I feel that every agent should do is just sit down and have a conversation with your buyer just to kind of see you know, some of the things that they may be looking for and some of the things that you may be able to uncover for them. So when they came in, we sat down, had a conversation, and we talked about what size of a home they want, three bedroom, two bath, square footage that they may be interested in. Also talk about your fa their family, you know, is this gonna be adequate for their family? Is it gonna meet their needs? So as a agent, you wanna make sure that you're going to ask open-ended questions. You know, something that's going to make them really talk so that you, you make and uncover things that they may not be thinking about. Basically, not asking them a yes or no type of question. So once they begin to talk and we uncovered all the needs and wants that they had, the next thing that we really needed to do was fill out an application and try to get them the financing that they need. Because that's going to be the most important thing, making sure that you're able to actually purchase the home because if you can purchase it, then we have a very good idea of where to move next because we don't want to get you out there before we get your financing and get you into a situation where you fall in love with this home and then all of a sudden you can't get approved for that amount. So hey, that's what we did. We went ahead and, and got them approved for their loan and then we go ahead and send them different properties that they feel may be great for them. And once we find that perfect home and we go out and take a look at it, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and try to get a contract written up, try to submit that offer, and try to see where we're going to fall as far as negotiating that, that transaction for them. But as I was saying, it's just making sure that you have that initial conversation with your client is very, very important because there may be things that you're missing that you could have uncovered in that initial meeting. But like I said, meeting them was a, a great pleasure and I'm just hoping that moving forward that we're able to continue to grow and, and build off of these clients because every client that we end up having, you're always looking for that next referral. And this business, that's what real estate is all about, referrals. So, like I said, just make sure that 
we're keeping our focus on our client and making sure that we know what they're looking for because we don't want to lose our vision and have them off track and sending them properties that they're really not interested in and that they don't really have a desire to go see. So that would just help us you know, with our job and it helps them to know that you are actually doing what's in their best interest. So moving forward, let's continue to be great inspiration to our clients, give them the service that they desire. And as always, if you need any real estate needs, contact the Fit Realtor. And Nita had the opportunity to be a guest speaker at a local business mixer, along with one of her great friends, Desmond Douglas. Desmond works for Edward Jones, an investment company, which can go hand in hand with real estate investments. The mixer was geared towards investors and landlords, hosted by our very own Dr. Free. Anita was able to scratch the surface on tons of topics, being that she does tons of home buyer workshops. She was thrilled to speak to the landlords and investors on current properties for sale, foreclosures, even giving some valuable information about building on the outskirts. She constantly reminded them the connection between the landlords, investors, and the realtor are vital. They must stay on contact in order to stay in the know. Housing Finance Authority and Montgomery, they'll tell you to, get a, a, to, to work with your local housing authority. Um, I can't tell you enough, and just don't limit your investment. If you feel like the, the market is saturated in Dothan, there's Geneva County, there's Dale County, you got a whole market around you because see, but people up north and developers are looking. They might be looking for Dothan, but they don't know about the small other communities that you can build up, like Dale County, Newton, Pinker, Cowards, I mean, well, if you see everybody is expanding and going out on the outskirts, come on, put developments out there. Put, build you a little, develop you a little small community. Get you some, these acres out here. You can do this. Don't let somebody else come in and then you run down there and beat the city of Dothan up and say, hey, why did y'all do that? We've been here for years. You got to, you got to go on more. Like I told people, move with the economy. Move with the economy. Trust and believe and, and put that faith behind that. If God bless you, like you said with the town, if he's blessed you to, to have this, make sure you put it back into someone else. And if, this, if he's put the ministry in you to let up me, to invest in the people becoming homeowners, or providing their roof on someone's head, that's big. That's big. Everybody don't have that. Some invest their money to cars, townhouses, condos, but you're investing back into Dothan, and that's what we want you to do. We would rather you have the first pot of, of anything than, than anyone else that comes in on the outside. Anita feels there is nothing like a great workshop to inspire, instill, and instruct great information that could grow your knowledge about real estate. She gave them an opportunity for questions, and she answered them thoroughly reminding everyone that they could have first dibs on creating their own community by simply investing into the right land or property. There were even investors from out of the area that shared their experiences. How they witnessed out of town investors come into their area and buy up all the land and develop, leaving the local investors with the leftover properties. In this game, you have to move fast. A lot of times I went to the, um, I don't know if any of you all attended the the mayor, a couple of years, uh, was it last year, a year before last, we had uh, a landlord meeting at the city. And I do, um, I do a homeowner workshop and I've been 15 years around the state. And um, I educate people how to become homeowners. So I work with a lot of buyers, okay? God bless me in the ministry to work with nothing but buyers. So I, probably, I have enlisted probably about five properties in my whole career out of 15 years. I work with nothing but buyers and investors and developers. So um, I know what buyers are looking for. Um, it's a lot of, you know, they're looking for the same thing that we are. You know, when we educate them and then that, the training that they have to do now, you have to understand the government is training homeowners. They have to go through a workshop and a class before they become a homeowner now. It's not that, oh, okay, I decided to go buy a house and I'm doing it. But they're not trying to relive 2008. Even with the MIP that they charge them, the private mortgage, the PMI, the private mortgage insurance is not still not going to cover, cover somebody's mindset that you're a homeowner and no longer renting. 
So the transition that I do twice a month in Florence is to help people to educate them on financial literacy and to get them out of that mindset and to help educate them about the process. On the next episode of Buying Alabama, after five awesome episodes, next week will be the season finale. As we bridge the past with the present and reflect and give thanks for the experiences, the laughs, the lessons, and the love that was given while making these awesome people homeowners, episode six will be epic. So join us next Sunday for the season finale of Buying Alabama. Psalms 32 Scrub Shop is having a huge going out of business sale and everything must go. They're located at 1906 Fairview Drive right next to Southeast Health. Come join in on this major sale on name brand items. Cherokee, Infinity, Lawn Dew, Vera Wang, Marilyn Monroe, Polo and more. All types of scrubs and hospital shoes. Psalms 32 is going out of business. So here is your chance to stock up on your favorite name brand scrubs. Again Psalms 32 Scrub Shop is having a huge going out of business sale. Be sure to stop by and catch these deals. All types of scrubs and hospital shoes. That's Psalms 32 Scrub Shop. They're located at 1906 Fairview Drive right next to Southeast Health. Come join in on this major sale on name brand items. Dawkins Heating and Cooling. Your premier heating and cooling specialist. Specializing in sales, service, and installation. No job too big or small. Commercial and residential. Call Mike today at 334 798 8525. Dawkins Heating and Cooling keeping you warm in the winter, and I scold for the summer. 334-798-8525, 334-798-8525, for an estimate.